We're given some parametric equations and we're being asked to find a couple different things. Let's go ahead and work through it. So solution. In part A, we're being asked for dy dx. So dy dx is equal to dy d theta over dx d theta. In this case, dy d theta, well, that's the derivative of y with respect to theta. So the derivative of sine is cosine, so this will be 6 cosine theta divided by, and then here we're taking the derivative, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so this will be negative sine theta, and let's not forget about the 6. So this is equal to negative cotangent theta. So that's the answer to part A. That's dy dx. For B, we want this, the second derivative of y with respect to x. So the formula for the second derivative of y with respect to x is d d theta of dy dx divided by dx d theta. Well, d d theta of dy dx, that's the derivative of negative cotangent. Well, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared, but we already have a negative, so this will just be cosecant squared theta. And then dx d theta, I think we found that already. Uh, I didn't write it down separately, though. dx d theta is right here, negative 6 sine theta. Cosecant squared is 1 over sine squared, so you can cleverly write this as 1 over 6 sine cubed theta, right? Because cosecant squared theta is 1 over sine squared theta. So that is the second derivative of y with respect to x. Part C wants us to find the slope when theta is equal to pi over 4. So in part C, we want dy dx when theta is equal to pi over 4. So all we have to do is plug in pi over 4 into our theta here. So we get negative cotangent of pi over 4. Now I know that the tangent of pi over 4 is 1 and cotangent is just 1 over tangent. So this is also just 1 and then we have the negative, so negative 1. So cotangent of pi over 4 is 1 and then you have a negative so you get negative 1. D. This is probably the hardest part of the problem. We want to find the concavity when theta is equal to pi over 4. So we want to evaluate the second derivative at pi over 4. Right, the first derivative gives us the slope, the second derivative tells us the concavity. So all we'll do is replace theta with pi over 4. So this will be negative 1 over 6 sine cubed of pi over 4. So this is negative 1 over 6 times. Now the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. So this is the square root of 2 over 2 cubed. Here's where we have to be really careful because we have to uh, simplify this. This is negative 1 over, let's see, we're cubing the square root of 2. So the square root of 2 cubed is square root of 2, square root of 2, square root of 2. So that's 2 square root of 2. So no problems there. So that's 6 times 2 square root of 2. And then when you cube the, three, the 2, <laughs> you get 8. So easy to mess up. So this is in parentheses, this creature. So this is negative 1 over, let's see, 6 times 2 eighths. That's really 6 times 1 fourth, which is 3 halves. So we end up with 3 square root of 2 over 2. So this is equal to negative 1 times the reciprocal of that. So 2 over 3 square root of 2. So this is negative 2 over 3 square root of 2. And if we rationalize, we multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. So this is negative 2 square root of 2 over square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. 
So we get 3 times 2. The 2's cancel. Boom, there it is at long last. Negative square root of 2 over 3. And that is the concavity. So this, in this case, it would be concave down when theta is equal to pi over 4. I think that was the, what we just did here was that was the hardest part of the entire problem, just dealing with all these fractions and square roots. Um, I, I hope this helps.